breaking news from Washington on the latest ongoing Rosenstein saga. A lot of news has been breaking in the last 24 hours. Fox News chief intelligence correspondent, our own Catherine Herridge, has been all over it today. Catherine. Sean, Baker's testimony matters because he had a pivotal role at the Bureau as the top FBI lawyer. He had the ear of then-director James Comey, and his testimony is at odds with Rosenstein's denials. Last week, he told Fox News he couldn't get into it. Mr. Baker, did you handle the dossier? Did you warn Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein that there was exculpatory information before he signed the final surveillance warrant? Mr. Baker, will you take our questions? But since sources describe Baker's testimony as forthcoming, deliberate, and sober, Baker telling congressional investigators that he believed then acting FBI Director Andrew McCabe and then FBI lawyer Lisa Page when they said Rosenstein's talk about recording the president and removing him from office was, quote, serious. Baker, who was not at the Justice Department meeting, said Page and McCabe came to him immediately after. And based on what he learned, Baker told investigators he believed Rosenstein was working with two people inside the administration after President Trump fired FBI Director James Comey to invoke the 25th Amendment. Asked about Baker's closed-door interview, a Justice Department spokesperson said they stood by their denials, including this one from Rosenstein. I never pursued or authorized recording the president, and any suggestion that I have ever advocated for the removal of the president is absolutely false. Rosenstein is expected on Capitol Hill Thursday, but our sources report tonight that there's a lot of internal tension among committee members about the former Format with some lawmakers pushing for a transcribed interview with a court reporter and others satisfied by a briefing. But these briefings can often be the subject of misinterpretation, Sean. Unbelievable reporting. Catherine Herridge, thank you from Washington tonight. Joining us now with more reaction, author of the number one New York Times bestseller, The Russia Hoax, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. Also, Fox News investigative reporter, contributor Sarah Carter, and from The Hill, John Solomon. Uh, Sarah and John, I'll start with both of you in the reporting. And Greg has a comment coming out tomorrow that he shared with me what both of you and Catherine have all reported today is that you have McCabe and you have Lisa Page all saying that when Rod Rosenstein Sarah we'll start with you said that he wanted to surreptitiously record the president of the United States and this would be a plot a revenge if you will against the firing of James Comey which he recommended which is ironic mm -hmm. um, they're saying it's real. Rosenstein is saying it's not real. I was only saying it sarcastically. Well, we got two against one, but you got two people that are in the deep state. Who do you believe? Well, this is why we've got to come to the truth. Somebody is lying here. But look, Sean, we have the former general counsel for the FBI, James Baker. This is so important because James Baker delivered this testimony deliberately without any emotion. He absolutely 100% believed Andrew McCabe and Lisa Page. I think even more shocking is that there are two other people within the administration, apparently, who were on board with Rod Rosenstein and trying to invoke the 25th Amendment, you know, saying that the president was unfit for office. So there is something happening within the administration, and Rod Rosenstein has those answers. Thursday is going to be very telling. Will he show up? Will he answer all these questions? And who is actually investigating the investigators? I keep saying this over and over again, Sean. If Rod Rosenstein is in charge of the special counsel, the Mueller investigation, who is in charge of Rod Rosenstein? He is in the middle of all of this. He signed the FISA, the final FISA warrant on Carter Page. He actually wrote the letter to uh, basically, you know, to give the president so that Comey would be fired. He laid it all out. Um, this guy is in the middle of everything, and somebody needs to find out the truth because he's still, the, um, you know, the deputy attorney general of the United States. John Solomon, and, and by the way, to answer Sarah's question, who's investigating the investigators, all of us have been to from the beginning, it started with both of you, to be honest, uh, led to Greg's number one New York Times bestseller. But this sounds like a soft coup, revenge taken out on a president. You have two people that that both recorded the very same thing here, John, about yeah. what Rod Rosenstein said at the time. That's McCabe, yeah. but he's under criminal investigation. And Page, friends with Strzok, that thinks, you know, Hillary should win 100 million to zero. 
Yeah, listen, just a short while ago, Sean, as I was coming over to the show, I bumped in, ironically, to a, an old FBI friend of mine. And here's what he said. After reading your articles the last couple of weeks, I'm starting to think the FBI needs to rebrand itself. Instead of Federal Bureau of Investigation, maybe we should call ourselves the Federal Bureau of Politics. Because somewhere there was a lot more polit politics going on than investigating. But, John, think I, about just, I really need to say this. This is only the top echelon. Yeah, this is not right. the rank and file. This is nope. not the guy you ran into. That's right. No, they're embarrassed by this because they do their job every day. They go do, listen, in the middle of Russia, you had one team doing the hacking investigation, professional intelligence work, the other team doing collusion, a total disaster. But let's think about James Baker for just a second. Four things he revealed. He used the Democratic Party's lawyer as a source. The FBI tried to hide that by redacting it and claiming it was national security information in the House Intelligence Report. He used a journalist as a source, David Korn, to get a, a version of the dossier after Steele was fired. And he was present for a conversation where at least the FBI people were serious about removing the president and recording him under the 25th Amendment. All four of those things are politics. None of them involve legitimate investigation. And every piece of this goes back to Hillary, who they exonerated without investigating and saved because it was a slam dunk, dunk obstruction of justice case. It all comes back to her phony Russian paid for dossier. Before the election, they lied to the American people. After the election, they used it to bludgeon Donald Trump and use a media leak strategy to to help set up an, an atmosphere where a special counsel could be appointed. And still, even Lisa Page said, nine months, zero evidence by the time we got to May of 2017. Uh, Greg, you have a column coming out tomorrow. I want to read the first paragraph to our audience here. When you talk, how is it possible Rod Rosenstein is still in charge of the special counsel <laughs> investigation and, and Trump-Russia collusion? Again, no evidence. Then you say, Trump may have given him a pass, You're referring to the meeting he had on Air Force One yesterday, for now. Mm -hmm. But Americans should not, and neither should the Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who seems perpetually missing in action and clueless, which I, I sadly can't disagree with, and I always liked him. Rosenstein is hopelessly compromised. He not only has disqualifying conflicts of interest because he's a key pivotal witness in the case over which he presides, and you can't be a judge in the jury and a witness in the prosecutor all ruled in one. It's a violation of federal regulations. It demands his removal and recusal, uh, 28 U.S.C. 528. And, but it, on top of it, now there's this new evidence in three witnesses that in an act of vengeance for the firing of Comey, he's trying to see record the president of the United States and depose him in the equivalent of a palace coup. I mean, this is egregious misconduct. It requires his termination, at the very least, the removal from the special counsel and we still case. we need the declassification. Oh, sure. And he and continues. And the unredacted FISA and the 302s and... He is suppressing wrongdoing by the FBI and the Department of Justice and suppressing his own wrongdoing in signing off on the FISA warrant. Sarah, John, do you agree with the characterization? Because I agree with Greg. I'm, I believe this was an attempt to literally set a president up for a soft coup. 100%, Sean. There is overwhelming evidence, not just circumstantial anymore. We've seen it in writing. We've seen it with testimony that's been provided to Congress. This was a white coup, a silent coup, a bloodless coup. I think what's so concerning to me is how dangerous this has been to America, how dangerous this still is to the administration, and it needs to be investigated. It has to yeah. be either a, a special counsel or someone else. John. Yeah, listen, the single biggest threat Rod Rosenstein faces isn't the plot that he didn't carry out to remove Trump. It's the misleading of the FISA court. Catherine Herridge asked him the right question. Someone has to answer that question. Did he mislead the FISA court? If it's yes, who do you, he doesn't who do belong there. Who do believe here? Do you believe McCabe and Page, or do you believe Rod Rosenstein? Uh, I'll, I'll never believe Rod Rosenstein. He has a long oh. and distinguished track record John? of deception. John? Uh, listen, I, I think you got to wait till all the facts come out. We haven't heard from Rod Rosenstein himself. It's one thing for a spokesperson to put out a statement. He's got to put his word on it, and then we have to hear what he has to say about it. And Sarah? I don't believe any of them, Sean. And I wow. think it needs to be investigated. Sad. Biggest abuse of power in our history. We will get to the bottom of it. We're going to stay on it. Anyway.
Thank you all.